Peace. I am Rami Salam L, Grand Sheikh of the International Asiatic Moorish Hip Hop Temple Number no. 23, a subordinate temple of the Moorish Science Temple of America. The segment you are viewing now is entitled More Jewels Uncovered. And this is where we dig into different texts, books, readings, and we find some of our history that's uh, been hidden within the pages. Uh, today we have three books that we will be looking into. The first is African American Islam by Amina Beverly McLeod. The second is The Land of Osiris by Stephen S. Mailer. And last but not least is The Continent of Mu by Colonel James Churchward. And I'm only going to read uh, real briefly. Um, because in the teachings of the Holy Quran it says that man knows not by being told. So I urge you um, and I almost demand of you to look into these texts yourself to confirm what I am reading is accurate um, and, and wise and exact. Moving right along, in Amina's book, first chapter, it's entitled The Early Communities 1900 to 1960. And it reads, the dawn of the 20th century America saw the land in a complex web of social relations between its black and white citizens. Blacks no longer had the protection of the federal government against discrimination and were forced to accept separate but equal accommodations in education, hospitals, public toilets, restaurants, and so on. Major riots erupted in the northern states as blacks migrated from southern states and were perceived as a new job competition by recent European immigrants. African Americans articulated diverse responses to this precarious social and political situation. And some of the diverse responses were uh, creating the, the religious communities. Um, I mean a list, uh, the, street state, the State Street Mosque of 1929, Islamic Mission Society uh, in 1939, the Nation of Islam in 1930, the African American Mosque in 1933, Islamic Brotherhood in 1929, Universal Islamic Society in 1926, but the first uh, recorded uh, community as is uh, labeled by Amina is the Moore Science Temple, 1913. And she goes on to uh, explain some of the history uh, although it doesn't seem uh, as accurate um, and I may contribute that to perhaps where she drew some of her studies from I'm not sure but I would like to inform you that Amina Beverly McLeod is an assistant professor in the Department of Religious Studies at DePaul University and when you dig into DePaul University I'll pull it up and uh, read the official statement DePaul University. Founded in 1898, DePaul University is the largest Catholic university in the nation and the largest private institution in Chicago. That's just for some clarification or um, some further background information on uh, Amina Beverly McLeod and her studies and her work. Um, and you can, uh, you can deduce what you would like from that. Moving along, in the land of Osiris, chapter 15 is entitled, Kemet and the Myth of Atlantis. <clears throat> the topic of the myth of, and it reads, the topic of the myth of Atlantis has been the focus of varied books and inquiries ever since Plato brought the concept to the Western world in two of his dialogues, the Timaeus and the Critias, written in the 4th century BC. Plato claimed the story was passed down to the Greek statesman Solon by Egyptian priest. Several other Greek and Roman authors also related similar stories of an, a great ancient civilization that perished in a series of cataclysmic earth changes. The story of the Great Flood has been found in mythology and literature of almost all peoples worldwide, which has convinced many authors that it was a real event. 
In their book Cataclysm, British science historian D. S. Allen, or Allen, along with geologists and anthropologists J. B. Delaire, present an effective case for the possibility of a worldwide cataclysm occurring very near in time to Plato's dates for the fall of Atlantis around 11,500 years ago. From my extensive research and interest in metaphysics, I became aware that Plato's Atlantis story and stories of even older civilizations such as that of Lumeria in the Pacific Ocean are accepted parts of the Western metaphysical tradition. Groups such as the Rosicrucians, the Freemasons, the, S the Theosophical Society, the Association of Research and Enlightenment, the Order of the Golden Dawn, and the Poor Knights of the Temple of Solomon, the Knights Templar, have all accepted the myth of Atlantis as a real event that occurred in time and space. Uh, this is a great book. Uh, I really advise people to check this book out. Uh, some really great information. But I just wanted to highlight specifically, um, you know, some of the very interesting information that uh, comes along with the story of Atlantis. And for further research, I would advise you to look into the movie uh, called Atlantis by Disney. Uh, very, very uh, uh, amazing information hidden within that movie as well. And lastly but not least, the lost continent of Mu. I wanted to show I wanted to show you uh, a figure. Just lost my page if you bear with me for one moment. It is on page 56, and it is entitled, The Geographical Position of Mu. I'm going to try to highlight this so that you can get a good picture, and I'll also try to find a, an accurate link so that perhaps you can see it yourself. But Mu would be right there. This would be North America, South America. Way over there is Asia. <clears throat> In chapter 3, the land of man's advent on earth. In the land of Mu, we have unquestionably found where man made his advent upon the earth. Various records conclusively prove that this land was the biblical garden of Eden. Prove that Mu lay to the west of America and to the east of Asia and therefore in the Pacific Ocean. <clears throat> I mean this this book here is uh, this book is something else. You know, uh, I, I, I skipped over to chapter 7. The Age of Mu Civilization. <laughs> Check this out. Chapter 7, mind you. I have asserted that the civilization of Mu dates back to more than 50,000 years ago. And if you do some studying uh, of the Moorish teachings, specifically uh, the one-on-ones, you may find and discover that it said that our our flag is between 10,000 and 50,000 years old. 50,000 years old. Very interesting coincidence. Chapter 7. Circle 7. I don't know. Further on, let's see anything else that I wanted to highlight. I'll just read the back real quick. Mu, the motherland. Mu, the motherland. A lost culture which was the center of civilization some 25,000 years ago. A vanished continent which sent Colonel James Churchward on a lifetime search 
from the vaults of an Indian temple to Australia, from Siberia to the South Seas. In 1868, while serving the British Army in India, Church Ward became close friends with the High Temple priests who taught him how to decipher several stone tablets which had laid hidden for centuries in the temple vaults. They told of a vast civilization which had emerged, flourished, and decayed long before our own, the continent of Mu. This is Church Ward's story and how he followed the trail of Mu to the ends of the earth and pieced together the picture of civilization whose influence is still felt throughout the world though now lost in the mist of time. Mu, the motherland. And just uh, to highlight one point um, is that there's also been um, spellings of more as M-U-U-R. Maybe it's a coincidence. Until next time, keep digging. Peace.